Good morning. Thank you, everyone, who has joined us at this Tradewind Solutions Marketplace webinar. We will start our program, and I will hand it off to Fiona Litwak with ARI um, to introduce the panelists and, and get us going. Morning, everyone. Thank you, Marka. I am Fiona Litwak. I am the Communications Director for Tradewind. Thank you all for being here and joining us on our um, Solutions Marketplace webinar. We do this throughout the month. We want to make sure we're getting the message out there about the marketplace and all the great things they can offer you guys. Um, uh, we do, like I said, we do this throughout the month, and I always post everything on LinkedIn. So if you guys are not connected with us on LinkedIn just yet, please do that. We also have a Facebook page as well as a Twitter. So make sure you're connected with us on all social media. Um, we, get, we have a really good program for you today. We're going to kick it off shortly. I want to introduce our panelists. We have Gene Del Coco, who is a longtime acquisition guru, um, and he's the lead on uh, the Solutions Marketplace place assessments that we do throughout the month, and he'll be able to give you a lot of great information about the marketplace and the assessment process. And we also have Rosa Johnson, who is Director of Contracts at ARI. Some of you know that um, IN3 uh, created the marketplace. We've actually changed our name to ARI. So um, if we say IN3, we really mean ARI at this point. Um, so Rosa is in charge of uh, contracts for ARI, and she's also intimately involved with the marketplace and all the contracting that goes through that. So I'll kick it off here shortly and Jean, I'll let you take the lead here and I will advance slides as you need. Okay, thank you, Fiona. Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm gonna offer you some information today on the Tradewind Solutions Marketplace. And uh, I just wanna cover some of the uh, rationale behind the marketplace and then some of the process that goes on within the marketplace. Um, so let's start out with, with what is the Tradewind Solutions Marketplace? The marketplace is simply a central repository, a video repository uh, for uh, AI, ML, digital, uh, and data and analytics solutions. Uh, it's, a, it's a way for the government to reach out to industry and have industry with a, a very low lift provide their new and novel technologies to the government for consideration for future procurements and to satisfy the needs uh, of the DOD. Um, this marketplace is open um, for industry, uh, not-for-profits, academia, uh, individual researchers, traditional and non-traditional vendors, uh, especially those who have not really ventured into dealing with the, the Defense Department um, you know, in, in, in acquisition type programs. Um, the, the difference between the Tradewind Marketplace, tra Tradewind Marketplace is trying to take uh, steps in trying to streamline the acquisition process uh, to benefit both the submitters, those that want to be involved in the marketplace, and, and also the government, to be able to bring those technologies in as quickly as possible, um, to be able to process them as quickly as possible, and to get those technologies in the hands of the eventual users uh, in, in a very efficient manner. Um, the, the difference between the marketplace and maybe some traditional acquisition approaches that you might have seen in the past is in the past, um, even for things like other transaction authorities, which is a simplified acquisition process, uh, it, it usually starts with a request for, uh, you know, request for a white paper, request for a proposal. Uh, it, you know, they, they get collected, uh, they're presented to a, uh, an evaluation panel, and then uh, down selected to, you know, the, the most favorable solutions. And then eventually a, um, uh, a solution provider is selected and, and it's usually one, maybe two that are selected to satisfy a particular requirement. Marketplace uh, uh, differs significantly from that in that in the marketplace, there are no winners and losers for, uh, for any particular requirement. We uh, later on in the in in the slides, I'll show you some of the focus areas that the marketplace is is focusing on. Um, and the purpose is to collect as many um, 
technologies as we can possibly bring into the marketplace to, to give the potential customers a variety of different solutions that they may have to their particular operational problems. Um, these, we've kind of reversed the, the process in the acquisition to somewhat where we do a collection and that collection will be done with a five minute video instead of you know, a written uh, either white paper or proposal. And they are immediately uh, evaluated by a panel of um, academic industry and government evaluators um, and then selected as either awardable or not awardable. Uh, those that are awardable have met all the requirements of a, uh, the competition requirements, either as established in the FAR or the DFARs or the statutes that, that govern the other transaction authorities. So they're considered awardable. And if you, uh, your video makes it through that evaluation process, then you could be considered as a, a vendor that has a, um, call it a sole, it, it's handled as a sole source type of procurement from there on out. So, um, uh, those that are not awardable, um, it doesn't mean that you have lost. There is feedback provided to you at each stage of this evaluation process and, and um, where, the, where the video may have fallen short um, uh, from the requirements or explaining you know, the, the benefits of your technology, you have an opportunity to come back in and resubmit that video with the corrections uh, that may be suggested by the evaluators. The, the marketplace really works on a 30 day, a 30 day cadence in that videos are collected each month. So from the first through the last month, uh, the last day of that month, uh, we will be selecting, uh, we will be collecting videos and then uh, shortly after that, usually within about a week after the collection is completed, uh, that evaluation will take place. And then within a couple of days after that, um, you will be notified that your uh, video is either awardable or not awardable uh, and pr be provided feedback uh, on you know, why it was awardable or why it was not awardable. And we will, uh, the group at ARI will be available to you to work with you uh, in the resubmission of your video in the event that it's not awardable. So you have multiple chances of coming back and being um, uh, being listed on the marketplace. Once a video is awardable, it is then posted immediately on the Tradewind marketplace uh, on a site that is available to all government customers where they can go much like Amazon and shop that video, um, those video collections on the Tradewind marketplace. If, a, if a, a government customer is interested, then the dialogue between that government customer and your company uh, can begin at that particular point. If it's, um, you know, if it's selected as something they want as it's been presented, then it can go immediately to procurement. So let me, I threw a whole lot out. Let me, let me go to the next slide. Again, the, the whole purpose here is to add another value or another value proposition to the acquisition. And that is we're trying to streamline this process to make it easier for you as a potential defense contractor to, to bring your technology to potential government customers. We're trying to do that you know, in uh, the most efficient way possible with the least impact on you as a company. We know how difficult it is, especially for smaller companies, you know, to respond to RFIs or RFPs or request for white papers. Um, and we're trying to make that simple. It's five minutes, five minute video to explain what it is that you're trying to solve 
and how you're trying to solve it and what benefit it has to the government. And, um, uh, you know, you, you can do that with a, a cell phone and a good story. And, and, and that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to attain here. And this will give you the maximum exposure to uh, the complete DOD and any potential buyer that is looking for a solution uh, that, that, that your uh, video might present. Gene, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to chime in here. I should have mentioned this. Um, we have a Q&A uh, panel, so you can probably see that on your Zoom um, interface. Feel free to drop questions in there. We'll, we'll be monitoring that throughout the event. We want to make sure we're getting your questions answered. So feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A. Thank you. You. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next slide, Fiona. Okay, so how does the marketplace work? As I said, it's a very, very simple process. Uh, there is an announcement that is now presently available on tradewindai.com under challenge, under the challenges there, and it's called the Tradewind Marketplace. Uh, to to uh, access that, you'll go to tradewindai.com. Uh, you'll register. It's you know, your company, some information about your company. Um, you will get credentials in order to get into that into that tradewindai.com uh, uh, website. Um, once you're in there, you'll go over to the right-hand corner of that of that page, the entry page there, and you'll see you know enter the marketplace. When you enter the marketplace, then there's instructions on how to uh, upload your video. There's also a help section, as, as Fiona kind of uh, intimated, uh, that will help you through uh, what is a good video, what is not a good video, what kind of information should be uh, included in your video. Um, also gives you some helpful hints how to put one together. Uh, there's a, a, a FAQ section in there that kind of answers some of the questions that you might have uh, as to, uh, as to what the video should be and the, the, the kind of the process that we're using for evaluation. Uh, once the videos are uploaded, uh, as I said, within the 30 day period, um, at the conclusion of that 30 day period, then all those videos are then assessed by a peer panel of government, academia, and industry. Um, there may be a number of each of those um, depending on the collections that come in. Uh, they're all uh, subject matter experts. Um, uh, the um, industry and academic partners have uh, non-disclosure statements, so none of your information is shared outside of that panel. Um, they will prepare a, uh, an evaluation of, of, of each of the videos. They will provide uh, uh, hopefully helpful feedback to you as to what was good and what maybe uh, could be better in on your video um, and then give you the opportunity uh, to um, you know to cor to correct or, or revise your video to make it more um, uh, more acceptable you know to the evaluation panel now there as I mentioned there is an announcement the announcement gives, very detailed instructions that announcement can be found in the in the uh, tradewindai.com under the uh, under the challenge this is tradewind marketplace it can also be found on um, sam.gov and it could also be found on the tradewind marketplace under the help section and the full um, uh, the full announcement is there that announcement contains a uh, appendix B, which is the rubric to which each of those videos is going to be subjected as far as evaluation. So the evaluation criteria is contained in that rubric. Um, just a little little note that that is really important is the fact that you know when you're contemplating put to, putting together a video, which we would suggest su suggest strongly that you read the full announcement, understand the kind of information that is being requested, 
and then look at the rubric and ensure that what you are presenting um, will be evaluated or can be evaluated successfully uh, through the requirements of that rubric. You can do your own compliance check and say, yeah, I've met all the requirements of the, the information I'm supposed to supply. And in addition, I've looked at the rubric and I know that my video meets those requirements, uh, those, those evaluation requirements. So the same thing that you see is what the evaluators see uh, when they're doing their, their assessment. Okay, go on. Next slide, please. Um, what I, I already talked about the 30 day cycle uh, and notifications for those that submit within a particular cycle uh, will be made within the next 30 calendar days. So you will be notified that quickly uh, that your video is either acceptable or not acceptable. On your video page, which you own, once you put your video into the Tradewind Marketplace, there is a comment section that uh, is on the right-hand side of your video. So if there's any comments made uh, by the judges or by the compliance panel who looks at your video when it's submitted, uh, you will see a notification. Now, we are in the process of um, doing a couple of modifications to to the to the marketplace where you will be getting automatic notifications when any kind of a comment is left uh, by someone who is evaluating um, at the present time though i encourage you uh, if you when you submit a video uh, to kind of check back every couple of days or so at your video submission to see if, it, if anything has been left. Um, the implementation of that automatic notification uh, will probably not occur for probably another three to four weeks. So um, presently, you know, it's, it's up to you to come back and, and, and uh, just keep an eye on your video and, and see if there's anything uh, that has been listed there. Um, the, the videos that are assessed as uh, awardable. Again, remember they've gone through a competitive process. Again, you're not being, uh, you're not competing against other vendors who might submit a video. You're really being uh, evaluated against the rubric or against those set of uh, evaluation requirements. So there may be multiple companies that are selected as awardable against the same set of requirements. It's really the value of your uh, value of your solution and the presentation of the benefits of your solution. Uh, there are multiple pathways. The, the, um, the, the, the actual procurement process can go a number of ways. It could either go through another transaction authority, it can go through a far based contract. It's really up to the government customer and how the government customer would like to handle the actual procurement. Um, just a little aside there, um, in, in, in the video, we ask you to present your problem statement and then your solution to the problem statement with enough background and enough scientific basis uh, to prove that you can indeed solve the problem that you state. You may find that a government customer may look at it and say, wow, really like the solution. However, I really have application for this uh, solution to another problem statement. And that's, uh, that's one of the elements of the dialogue that will occur between you and the government customer um, once, that, once your video is, is, uh, is selected for further discussion. Go ahead, Fiona, let's go to the next one. Jane, we have a couple of questions um, I want to make sure that we're getting to. Someone's asking, what are the key differences between the Trayvon Solutions Marketplace and the Defense Innovations Unit, especially in, in terms of speed of advancing prototypes? Uh, let me say that um, 
the, I think that the key difference is that built into the trade wind marketplace is a pathway to procurement. So the intention here is that we want people to buy what you're trying to sell. So uh, built into the marketplace is not only the collection and the identification of the technologies, which would be put into some database, but also to, to connect that, that, if you want to call it that database, to a procurement pathway. So we're encouraging and, and, and Fianna and others are working uh, to actually engage the government customers to ensure that they know what's on the marketplace, to bring them to the marketplace. Uh, we, have, we have planned as part of the, of the marketplace, various ways of bringing or of identifying those technologies to the potential customers. So we're engaging on the other side with the government uh, to ensure that they know just, you know, what the value uh, is and what's contained within the marketplace. We have planned, you know, uh, I guess I put in quotes, movie nights where we'll actually convene a bunch of government customers and then walk through with them uh, the videos that have been so uh, been uh, uh, assessed as awardable and give them the opportunity to see what's there, to understand what's there, to discuss with them, uh, you know, their problem sets and how these videos or these technologies might solve their, their problems, and then work with them to establish a, um, an acquisition pathway where they can reach out to you and then engage you in a procurement process. Thanks for that, Gene. Um, I just want to respond. Um, I want to tack on to what you said, and by doing that, I'll probably answer two of the questions that just came in from um, from some people. So, one thing that's really distinctive about the marketplace, and it's sort of a it's so um, implicit for us, but I don't think we we um, bring it out to light as much as we really should. This completely changes the paradigm, right? Because what we're used to seeing on the government side is hey, I'm a government person and I have this requirement and I'm going to tell the world I need this requirement and then I'm going to collect all these possibilities and then contract through that. What we're saying here is we're kind of flipping that on its head. We're saying to industry, hey, if you have a solution out there, drop it into the marketplace and then the government people will go in there and shop for whatever they need. That completely changes the framework. Um, so David Cook was asking, are the vendor video submissions unsolicited or are they in response to the government soliciting for a solution to a specific problem? The marketplace is... Think of it as an Amazon. You go into Amazon because you know you need something. You do your search, you find what you need, and then you click and buy. That's sort of what we're doing here with really high-tech advanced um, technologies. And the other piece is while we're uh, heavily focused on AI, ML, digital, and data, we are seeing a lot of submissions in the cyberspace. We're seeing all sorts of different high-tech advanced technologies that the government may need, but even if they hadn't put a solicitation out, maybe they're just gonna go on there and see what's available. Or maybe they know that they have a they have a solicitation that's coming down the pipe, but they want to see what's out there and start getting different ideas. So we're really kind of changing the framework with, with this marketplace. Um, Gene, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, I do. I do one thing, and and, and I'm glad you brought it up that way. Um, there is a a little change in paradigm also because you may be presenting something, uh, a solution that the government doesn't even know it needs. And I think that's important. Um, you know, the, the government knows what it knows. Uh, and by you providing this, you may be actually establishing the requirement for the government. So the government may see something there and say, you know, I never thought about that. That may be a potential solution to a problem that I really haven't thought about. Okay. And I know I have. So, um, like I said, I think it works both ways. It, 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 it allows you to get your, and a side piece is, especially for small companies, you know, one of the biggest challenges you have is how do you get your technologies known to the DOD? And, you know, if you use traditional, you know, BD type techniques, you know, you have to have the right person making a contact with the right government person. Well, in this particular case, you know, we're giving you a platform. 
we're giving you an opportunity, a showcase where you can take those technologies and we're doing your BD for you. You know, we're, we're allowing you to say, here, put it on the marketplace, make it known to all those government customers. And, and I think that's a, that's a value, and again, especially from a, from a small business perspective where you don't have maybe, you know, just don't have the resources in order to be able to touch as many people as we're able to touch with the trade with marketplace. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that just brought up another thought to mind, Gene. So if you have a solution that you know the government needs, they've either stated it or you know that this is a problem, drop it in there. If you have a solution that you know can solve a problem that the government doesn't yet know they even have, put it in the marketplace. Let's face it, um, a lot a, Great advancements come out of the government structure. However, most of the best advancements always come out of the industry side, right? So the, the marketplace in some ways is sort of an homage to that. It's sort of like, you know, we're, we're respecting the fact that you guys are the big big brains in the room and have all these solutions that someone at government might not have even thought of. And that's not in any way to disparage people on the government side. It's just that there's a lot of innovation that comes out of the industry side. And this is really a place where we can sort of honor that. Um, and so Ke Tom Keeley was asking about that very question. Is there is this a place to market new approaches to AI? That's exactly right. And we'll talk about blue sky technologies a little bit later when we get into our um, focus areas. But when you go into the marketplace, there are different categories that you can submit your video under. And one of them is blue sky technologies. And it's just that. It's those technologies that you know answer a problem that the government may not even be tracking currently. So. Um, Gene, someone's asking, is there a minimum TRL requirement for solution submitted? No, there isn't. Um, we are, if, if, when you look at the rubric, which is an Appendix B of the announcement, there is an evaluation, I'm sorry, there's a, a collection of information about the TRL level. It is not a graded category. We're asking you to, to you know, self proclaim your TRL level. And the purpose of that is to ensure that the government customer knows where that technology is. For instance, you know, if it's a TRL level eight or nine, the government knows, okay, I can buy this thing. It's already gone through a certain level of assessment and, you know, and, and proof. And, um, you know, I can use it right away. Uh, on another hand, you know, you may have something at a TRL level two and say, wow, great technology, but at least the government customer knows I have to plan for that maturity. So we're collecting that information, we're providing it to the government customer. And again, it's just to level set with the government customer where this technology is in the broad span of maturity of technologies. It does not, you know, it does not. Uh, take away from or um, you know uh, your ability to to be awardable or to um, at least in the assessment side of it uh, or you know be awardable. Somebody had asked um, what the competition process is once they're on the marketplace. I think Gene, we need to clarify the fact that getting into the marketplace is in fact the competition, right? That's right. There, the, the competition, and again, I, 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 I kind of hesitate to call it competition. We're looking for compliance to the rubric that we have established. So we've set up certain uh, evaluation criteria. And what you're doing is you're complying, you're competing against yourself, so to speak. You know, how well can you um, meet the requirements that have been laid out in that rubric, okay? Uh, so that competition, the result of that competition is that you're either considered awardable or not awardable. So if, you, if you don't meet, you know, successfully meet all of the requirements or to the level of requirements of that rubric. So they're really, you know, the competition is how well I want you to take the test, I guess, is, is about the best way to do it. You're not competing against other companies. And, and uh, as I said earlier, you know, there may be for any particular month's collection uh, against a particular focus area, 
there may be you know five or six different technologies you know that that um, that are assessed as awardable and they all will be put on the marketplace and and be available to the government customers to review hey gene if i could just um add to that from a a, a contractual standpoint the announcement also meets all of the competition requirements uh, regarding from the far side, um, non-far. So just wanted to add that. Thank you, Rosa. Yeah, yeah, it's like I said, you've already been evaluated and assessed as awardable. Therefore, from a government customer's perspective, there is no further competition that is required. That government customer could select something from the marketplace that has been considered awardable, okay, and then move directly with that vendor to a procurement pathway. Gene, we also have a few more questions. Um, we have a question, uh, does the trade wind solutions, is it only for the DOD space? At the present time, we're, we began this, this whole process began on the 1st of November. So we have now gone through um, three, November, December, January, and, and we're in February collection cycle. Um, so we've only gone through those four. At, at the present time, we're focusing on the DOD. So it's you know all the services within the DOD. Uh, our intention is to expand this, and we've already got gotten ind indications from other government agencies that they want to use uh, the marketplace. Um, and we're in the process of, of uh, working out the process requirements to get other government agencies outside of the DOD to have access to the marketplace. It's not there now. Gene, I just want to touch on a couple of questions coming in from Gretchen. She's asking if it We've kind of covered this, but I think we may need to hit these points again. If a video is compliant, I, I think she means with the rubric, does it get posted? What is the process internally to tra for Trayvon to ensure it's compliant? Um, so that just really speaks to how a, a video moves through the process. Once you submit a video, it goes through an assessment. That is the, the internal process. It goes through an assessment with a panel of SMEs. Um, and then once it's deemed to have complied with the um, rubric that's been set out by the government saying that this is where the government says, here's what we need to see in this video. Once that video is deemed to be compliant with that rubric, it then gets posted into the marketplace. Once it's in the marketplace, it is awardable. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions on that, but- Well, let me, let me clarify. Let me clarify compliance, okay? Um, when I mentioned compliance, compliance is a very simple process. What we, when a video is submitted, the first thing that um, that ARI will do is they'll look at that video and ins ensure that it complies with the requirements that have been established within the announcement. For instance, and I'll give a very simple one, one that we've faced um, you know, throughout the collection cycle. We have a five minute limit on the video. Okay, many videos, I shouldn't say many, some videos have been coming in that are at eight minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes. It specifically states that a video should be no longer than five minutes. Now, when I say five minutes, it's you know not 5.0, it could be four minutes and 40 seconds, it could be five minutes and 20 seconds, Something like that, as long as it's close to the five minutes. Um, that's a compliance check. Um, is the video um, uh, understandable? By that, I mean, you know, uh, was there sufficient quality in the video? And when I say quality, you know, can we understand what the speaker is trying to say? If, if there's material presented, is it viewable? Um, uh, all of this in preparation for going through the assessment process. So the compliance thing is is kind of mechanical. It's yes, does it meet the um, uh, the minimum requirements for a video to be submitted? And if and in most cases that that's that answer is yes. Uh, very few cases that we had non-compliant videos, but we have. Um, um, in fact, I had two this last collection period. 
uh, where I think the company had a problem in uploading their video because they had five minutes and they uploaded 30 seconds worth of video. Well, you know, there's a problem there because what could you assess in 30 seconds? Uh, so, you know, those are the kind of things that are that are looked at in the compliance portion. Um, and what we usually do is immediately go back to the company and say, oh, by the way, you got a problem. Your video is too long or your video is too short. Do you have a problem in, in submitting? The second piece of that is what Fiona said. And that's where we go into the evaluation process. Once all of those compliant videos are collected, they're then presented to the evaluation panel who uses that rubric, which is at Appendix B, and they will do an assessment against each of that each of those rubric requirements. That's where we either get an awardable or a not awardable video. I hope that answered the question. Oh, okay. A um, couple more questions that just came in. Um, how is the marketplace being advertised to government stakeholders? I'm excited to find out about it, but it was only through luck of finding it through LinkedIn. Yes. So that um, is a big undertaking, and we've been plugging away at that for months now. So we have a lot of different ways of getting to government stakeholders. Um, we obviously social media is a big one, but it's not the only one. We've, I've also um, we've also done a lot of uh, online articles in Defense Scoop, uh, Fed Fed News, like a lot of different online um, publications that service the government community. We also do live events, so we do a lot of face to face. So we meet, meet people through there. Um, uh, we do webinars specifically for governments. While this is for industry and open to the you know industry at at large, we also do events specifically for government that are closed just for government. So we have a number of different ways we're getting the word out there to government um, acquisition, contracting, procurement uh, folks. Now, obviously, <laughs> if there was if there was a bar where every, all of those people congregated, I would be there ba banging the drum. But unfortunately, you know, we, we plug away and we just make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can to get the word out there. On the plus side, the good news that we've seen um, is that we're actually getting calls from government people saying, hey, I heard about this thing. Can you tell me more? So the word is starting to get out there um, in, a, in a really significant way. So obviously the acquisition core is huge. Um, I know I know we're making a dent. I know we're making progress, but obviously um, it does take a little bit of time for that message, the word to, to seep through um, all the people that we want to get to on the government side. Um, I think we're having I think we're getting a lot of traction from actual services. Uh, you know, we've spoken to the Navy, we're working with SOCOM. So we've we've made a lot, and I can go on and on with in terms of who we've spoken to on the government side and who we're working with on the government side. Um, I think the contracting authorities are gonna be a little bit tougher to get to, um, but hopefully that answered your question. And Gina Rosa, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. There's one, just one other point, Fiona. Uh, the, you, the industry, were, you know, uh, academia, whoever, uh, also have uh, uh, could have a role in this too. If your video is assessed and you're assessed as awardable, then I would encourage you, to the extent that you have the you know the network to do it, is to get you know notification out to everybody that you deal with and say, hey, by the way, I have a video. I submitted it on this subject. It's been it's been evaluated by the government, it's considered to be awardable. It's on the marketplace. Uh, you now, send them a copy of the video that that was awardable, and uh, direct them either to that site where they can view it, or just send them to us, and we'll direct them to where they can go. So, like I said, you know, you could you can work that yourself too. Yeah, that's a great point. That reminds me, um, we were at um, Navy, one of the Navy PO, PEO offices had an industry day a couple of weeks ago in DC, Rosa and I were there and we had a person come up to uh, our, our display, our booth. And he's like, you know, an interested person. He said, we have this technology, um, you know, we've been working with the government, but they said, you know, by the time they go through the whole contracting process, it won't be until 2024. I said, 2024, that, that's, that's, who's got time for that? That's ridiculous. So I said, why don't you 
put, you know, get your, make a five minute video, get your solution onto the marketplace, call your customer, your government customer and say, Hey, go onto the marketplace and buy, buy my solution. And, you know, we could do that in, you know, uh, you can get your video on in 30, 30 days. You know, why are we waiting until next year? That's ridiculous. So yes, to Jean's point, um, you, you guys can certainly help evangelize the marketplace uh, and, and help get the word out. Um, like I said, we're doing everything we can, but if you guys could take on some of that role, that, that would be great too. It helps everybody. Um, more questions, Jean. We are cooking with gas here. Um, fair question. What measures have you put into place to ensure the government customer doesn't walk away with my idea without necessarily buying my solution? That's, an, that, yeah, Jean, I'll defer that to you. I, I, again, there's there's no guarantee to that, um, a guarantee against that. But um, it, in most cases, the, the government is not going to take that, I would expect, the government would not take that idea since it's yours uh, and know that they can get to it. You know, if, if it excites them that much, they're going to want to come to you. And, and one of the things that we encourage, and I, I want to mention this, we encourage the government, um, if they see a video, and uh, let's say, for instance, I mean, this is still a five-minute video, so you can, you're can you limited to the amount of information you can provide. Uh, and we ask you to provide non-proprietary information, uh, certainly not classified information on, on your videos. Um, uh, the, we encourage the government to open a dialogue with you. So, you know, one of the things that they can do since it's already gone through the competition or if you want to call it the evaluation process, they can open a dialogue with you and say, hey, listen, I'd like to talk to you more. And I would expect that most of the selections of these technologies, you know, by a government customer will result in probably a one-on-one -on -one discussion. You know, the government will call you and say, hey, listen, we want to talk. You know, what do you have? Uh, what kind of IP are you talking about? What kind of timeline are you talking about? You know, to develop whatever technology it is that you present it, um, and then of course you'll you'll know, you'll you'll talk cost and and things of that nature. So uh, I think it's 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 just um, trying to help with 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 making the connection between you and the government customer. Um, again, I can't guarantee that somebody from the government may say, oh, great idea. Uh, you know, I'm going to go do something with it, you know, other than to speak to you. I, we can't guarantee that. Yeah, I don't foresee that happening. That's a massive IP issue. And we, we don't. Yeah, yeah. We haven't run into that and we don't expect to run into it. I mean, at the end of the day, the government customers in the business of procuring solutions, not running off and making their own solutions or you know, trying to make some side deals. I, they, they just want to get their whatever whatever technology they want. They just want to go buy it. I don't think that they're in the business of trying to develop their own and they certainly don't have um, the bandwidth on on the, you know, on the workforce side to do that. So um, hopefully that answers that question. Uh, can we view videos from companies that have been accepted? Um, Gene, I, I, don't, I don't think that no. we can. Right? No. no, the answer is no. Proprietary, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're keeping, we're, we're, although, we ask for information. Uh, we ask for the information in the video to be non-proprietary. We do not share your videos with other uh, other industry. Okay, so that that page where your acceptable video, in fact, all through the process, you know, we we consider it you know uh, government only information. Uh, when we post it it still remains as government information. So the only, the only people who can get on to the, uh, the, the uh, trade wind marketplace, okay, are, uh, you know, government people who are looking to buy a solution. So other vendors cannot get onto that marketplace and just peruse all the videos. Based on the vast amount of technologies and solutions, how does the trade wind solutions marketplace build the SME panel? for each video submission? Uh, we have reached out and have developed um, uh, a set or a cadre, if you want to call it that, of academic um, industry 
and government personnel with very specific capabilities uh, or specific knowledges. So when we look at the videos that are submitted in a particular month, we can match uh, those technologies with those people who have you know, the expertise in that particular area. So we're, we're trying to get the best evaluator or the most knowledgeable evaluator to the technology that's being uh, evaluated. So the uh, best I can say is that, you know, we, we, we have a pretty uh, extensive list of SMEs that we're using from academia, industry, and government. Uh, and we will apply them to the evaluations as required in, in, in order to do, uh, you know, that evaluation justice. Okay, we have a, a good question here. So from Will Thomas. So th the question is regarding multiple technologies, right? So th the quick answer is if you have multiple technologies that solve multiple that solve different problems, you really want to have one video per per technology, per solution. But Will is asking if a solution, the actual solution itself is comprised of multiple technologies, each one able to be deployed individually. Is it better to submit multiple videos about each capability or one video that covers all the tools in that one solution? And hmm. I, I would suggest that you do it as individuals. If, they're stand, if, if they can be standalone, okay, then I would put them as separate videos. Okay, Take advantage of the fact that you have five minutes to explain them. Now, you might want to reference the other solutions in your five minutes. Don't take the time to explain it. Just refer them to you know the fact that this can be a component piece of something else. But but the the, the test that I guess I use and, and we've had this situation by the way uh, in the first in, in the first set of collections we had a company come in with um, with multiple multiple videos and each of those videos was uh, was a component of a much larger solution, but each one was explained separately and could stand on its uh, on its own separately. So you know you can you, you can buy just that piece, or you can uh, aggregate that piece with the other videos into a, a much larger solution. Uh, we just ask you know, again. I think for your benefit, uh, you should take advantage of the five minutes that you have, you know, to explain each one in the depth that. You know that you feel that you can uh in order to i guess win over the judges that you you really have the uh the the background not not the background but the uh um, the basis for for what that solution is okay you want to go on to the next slide gene yeah please yeah the focus areas yep Okay, these are the technical focus areas. Now, these are kind of generic and they really are strategic focus areas that have been laid out. Um, they are um, they are general in nature, so almost any of your technologies in this particular area uh, could probably be applied to uh, you know to any or you know you have a choice of where you can place those as far as a, a technical focus area, which we ask you to provide. Uh, we ask you to provide which focus area are you uh, addressing. We've, as Fiona mentioned earlier, we did add one, which is the last one you see on that list is discovering the blue sky technologies and applications. And we wanted a place where, um, again, just to cover what we didn't know, if there was a technology that kind of didn't neatly fit into one of the other focus areas, but 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 we felt that you felt were was a novel or an innovative technology that might help the services, then we want to hear it. We want to see it. So we ask you it um, um, for those technologies to just list them under discovering blue sky. You could call it an other category if you'd like. Okay, um, I think enough of that. Yeah, Gene, so, someone's asking um, whether we consider facilitating partnerships between customers to develop 
um, solutions that meet common needs. And it made me think, you know, to date, we haven't received any videos that came in from multiple companies where it was two companies partnering on something. Oh, no, we did. We have. Oh, yeah. have we? Yes, we have. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, we have had, we have had uh, videos that have come in that have been the compilation of maybe one or two, uh, I'm sorry, two or three companies, okay, that have worked together, taking the benefits, obviously, of each and creating uh, a solution that use the benefits of, of each of those companies. And we encourage that. Okay, um, we will move on. Oh, okay, so top five ways to get your video accepted. <laughs> yeah, hey, let me, let, if, if I might. Yes, you know, go ahead. There, there, there's a, a couple of things that we have found consistently have been problematic as we go through this. Okay, we've received a video uh, and, and We'll get we'll get a submission that's not acceptable or not not awardable, uh, and I'll go back to the company and ask them, "Did you read the announcement?" Uh, no, we didn't read the announcement. Well, did you look at the rubric? No, we didn't look at the rubric. And I say, well, you know, that's the basis for what we're trying to do. If if you don't know the information that's there, then putting together successful video is going to be, you know, catch as catch can. You may you may or may not hit the mark. So I, I, I suggest strongly that you look at the material that's there, okay? Um, especially, you know, look at the instructions, look at the rubric, look at that Appendix B. We're giving you the answers to the test. We're saying, okay, here is what we're looking at. Now, if you don't have something that fits into that category, the evaluators are just going to say, not supplied, not in detail enough, and it's going to lower your score as far as meeting the requirements of, of the rubric. Um, I would say that as a whole, across all the videos that I've, I've reviewed over the last four months, most of them have been very well done, okay? And, and many of them were done I'm sure with somebody having a, a, a cell phone on the stand uh, and just did it. Some are more professional. One of the things that we would encourage you not to do is many of you might have you know, some stock BD videos, okay, that that you know you have in files someplace, and you're just going to throw that out, you know, and and like macaroni, I hope it hits and sticks to the wall. I would encourage you not to waste your time that way. Um, it, what we look for in each of the videos is really four major points. And the first point is identify the problem statement you're trying to solve. I don't care what it is, but, 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 but develop and clearly articulate what the problem, what the problem is that you're trying to solve so that all the evaluators understand this is my basis. This is what they're telling me they're trying to solve. Secondly, of course, tell them the solution that you have and add sufficient information that will give them the scientific basis for why a solution like that, you know, has a basis in fact and could possibly work. Okay. That's, you know, that's really kind of explaining yourself and giving yourself credibility. Uh, the third piece is, okay, now that I have a problem statement, I have a solution, why would the DOD care? You know, what is the benefit of your problem and the solution that you've come up with uh, to the DOD? Does it save them time? Does it save them money? Does it save lives? Does it make them more efficient? Explain why, okay, uh, why you think this is of value. and and. Uh, the last item is really a differentiator. What we're asking you is, okay, there may be 15 other companies out there that are providing solutions to that problem. Why is yours unique? Why is yours better than anybody else's that are out there? Or what value do you bring uh, that you probably won't find in some of the other solutions? So we're looking for that differentiator. You know, it's, it's a it's a place for you to you know pound your chest and tell them 
tell the government how great you are. So, so those four, those four elements are really important to be included in the video. And some of the videos we've received actually go through that. They'll have a slide that comes up and says problem statement. And then they'll go through problem statement. And the next one will be solution. And they'll go through it. So they want the evaluators to know that they've considered all of those points uh, before they go in. So like I said, it's, it's, it's important, not only what you have, but the manner in which you present it. Um, and again, to keep it uh, in line with what the rubric is asking for and what those requirements are in the announcement. Now, I, I should have mentioned back at the, um, when we talked about the focus areas, those focus areas may be appended, you know, in the, in, in the future. Okay, so maybe next month we have a government customer comes in and says, I'd like to add another focus area. I want videos directed towards whatever it might be. So keep an eye out both on uh, tradewindai.com under the challenges and, and, uh, and in the uh, Tradewind marketplace, you know, for any changes that are occurring, any revisions that are happening to the announcement. In fact, in February, we had revision two of the initial announcement. Okay, which by the way, uh, not only had more helpful hints in guiding you through the uh, the submission process, but also had a completely different rubric than the first couple of months that we did this. That's 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 essential that you know that, because if you're if you're building your video against an old rubric, you know, the chances of of uh, you doing well as you go through the new rubric is probably small. Jean, I just want to jump in here. We have one more question, and then I think I want to show people where they can access the marketplace. So while I'm doing that, if you could just touch on this question from Malin, can we as an offshore company submit for our solution? I'm sorry, say that again. Can an offshore company submit a video solution? Yes, yes. we're considering foreign, uh, foreign companies. Um, it, it, it's still... We, the, there's a little more uh, due diligence that we have to do to ensure, uh, you know, that we can get through a procurement cycle with a foreign company. But yes, we are accepting foreign submissions. Okay, great. So I wanted to show everybody tradewindai.com. We refer to it a couple of times. So I just want to clarify what Jean said earlier. So tradewindai.com is, in fact, our website for all things Tradewind. Um, one thing that people don't know, but they will soon understand better, is that Tradewind itself, just Tradewind, is a, actually an umbrella. It's a, it's a suite of tools and services um, designed by um, Chief Digital Artificial Intelligence Office, um, CDAO, and it's got many tools and services under that. The Trade Wind Solutions Marketplace is sort of the flagship service, and we've been marketing it heavily. However, you're going to start seeing a lot more messaging about the fact that Trade Wind is actually an umbrella of suite, uh, a, a suite of tool, tools and services. Um, and this site will uh, start sending that message as well. But if you go on tradewindai.com, you can just go on the Solutions Marketplace tab. And this is where you can get all the information that we referenced earlier. So this is the um, the video. It's not loading, but on your on, on there it is. Okay. So um, are you guys seeing this? Okay. So this is the all the videos that we're referring to, all the video tips. This is where you can get the announcement. You hit download now, where you can get on sam.gov. Here's our FAQs to get into. This is just an information page about the marketplace. To get into the marketplace itself. You go into uh, join us. If you haven't joined the Tradewind Exchange yet, you'll go on here if you're academia or industry and you'll register for the Tradewind Exchange. It's really just a couple email address, just a couple questions and you'll get your credentials for the actual exchange. Once you're in the exchange, you will have access to the marketplace. If you already have an account with the exchange, you just go into log in. You log into the exchange, you put your email and password, you get into the Tradewind Exchange, you'll see a bunch of cha different challenges in there. There's a community in there. There are many different options once you get into the exchange. Tradewind Solutions Marketplace is in that exchange. So hopefully that clarifies things for you. Um, 
yeah, so it looks like we've answered all the questions and it looks like we're right at time. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you again to ATAR for all their help um, with uh, putting these events together. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Marka. And hopefully we'll see you guys soon or you know, see, hopefully we'll see a video on the marketplace some, someday soon. Thank you all again. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.